call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the agenda for the May 1st uh, special meeting the council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. I call a hearing to order. The purpose of the hearing is to provide an overview of the 2018 financial plan and to allow interested person to make representation, ask questions, or register an objection regarding the 2018 financial plan. Request any persons making representation to the hearing state their name and their civic address. Okay, uh, we'll start on, on page one. People have a copy of the first line is the total tax levy. It shows that last year we budgeted uh, around off 6.7 million. This year it's 6.8. There's an increase of $101,000 in the tax levy. That amounts to 1.5% increase. Grants in lieu of taxes are the monies that we get from the uh, province for provincial and other government owned properties. We really have no say in that. They just give us a lump sum amount of money. Uh, this year, 374,522. School division requisition, again, we have no control over that. The school division submits their uh, requisition for funds and we levy the taxes and turn the money over to the school division. Other revenue. It's listed on page two in your budget, and there's transfers from accumulated surplus uh, of 144,000 this year. So the total municipal revenue last year was budget 6.97. This is 7.058. That includes the other uh, grant, CLU, and other added uh, monies. General government services last year we budgeted 732,000. This year 749,000 under protective services, and the main cost here is the RCMP, budgeting 1.486 million last year, 1.437 this year. Uh, the concern with the RCMP budget is that there's some retro pay that's uh, deserving of the RCMP officers, and we've been unable through D division to get them to give us an amount of how much that, uh, that back pay would be, so uh, that could keep threatening to send it in, but they haven't been able to do it, so we're waiting on the federal government. Transportation services, uh, last year we budgeted 9, 956810 This year we're down a little bit to 948961 Environment health services, uh, 1.016 million last year, this year 1.053 million. Public health and welfare, last year 184,000 budgeted and 188,000, so a slight $4,000 increase in this budget. Environmental uh, Development Services, last year budget 37,600, this year down a little bit to 36,300. Economic Development Services, uh, includes RISE and other economic development, uh, last year 107,000, uh, this year 110,000, so a slight increase in the budget amount. Recreational Cultural Services, that's parks, uh, recreation, and other uh, cultural services. Last year budgeted 1.56 million. This year down a little bit at 1.47 uh, million. And Fiscal Services, budgeted 481, 259 last year. This up uh, about 60,000, about 80,000, 561, 863. Deficit Recovery, that's from 2015. When we ran a deficit in 2015, the uh, Municipal Affairs and Public Utility will require us to recover that amount. So that's the deficit recovery. Transfers to reserves, uh, last year 364,000, this year slightly less at 363,502. So the total basic expenditure went from 6,972 to 7,037,000. ,000. Allowance for tax assets, uh, so the total municipal expenditure, uh, including all the things listed above, went from 6.9 million to 7.05 million. And we're predicting a balanced budget. Any questions from anybody?
So on the revenue side, uh, taxes added, uh, we're budgeting 50,000 this year. Tax penalties, 46,000. License fees, 1,350. <coughs> Business licenses, 9,000. Uh, raffle licenses, $300. Cable television, or we get a fee for the line, uh, is 6,460 as a revenue. Uh, building permits, so predicting 10,000 this year. It's always sort of a shot in the dark because you're never sure exactly how much that is going to be. Occupancy permits uh, budgeted $350 last year and in constant are doing the same this year. Other revenue, uh, fines, $12,000 budgeted, we've got $14,000, so we're hoping to raise $14,000 this year. Uh, sale of services, government services, uh, this year budgeted $40,000. Protective services, Budgeting 80,000 down slightly from the previous year. Transportation services up from 25,000 to 40,000. Environmental health uh, up slightly or up about 100,000 from uh, 453 to 557. Public health and welfare 56,000 to 56,000, slightly less this year. Recreation and cultural s revenue budgeting 166 last year and 160 this year. We actually received 155 in the previous year. Sale of goods, uh, hope to raise 14,000 last year, raised 11 this year, we're budgeting to raise 11. Rentals, last year revenue predicted at 193, went to 204, we're projecting 193 again this year. Returns from investments, uh, budgeting 16,000 because we received just over that last year. Uh, unconditional grants, a municipal operating grant from the province, that grant was given to municipalities that have their own police force and it was supposed to offset some of the cost of police protection in those municipalities. Conditional grants from the government, $3,000. The federal gas tax, uh, $211,000. Uh, it has strings attached as to what it can be used for. Uh, provincial government, uh, there's $9,000 there. Municipal government, also revenue of $214,000 there. Land and capital asset sales, hoping to raise 56,000 from sale of land. Uh, miscellaneous revenue budget of 34,000. So total of other revenue projected last year was 2.49 million. This year projecting it will raise a little more at 2.548 million. Transfers from accumulated surplus. Uh, last year we transferred 119,000, this year 100,000. Uh, transfer from reserves, 66,000, yes. Last year 44,000, this year. Total other revenue and transfer, uh, we, we uh, budgeted to raise 2.68 million last year and raised 2.62. This year, our budget to raise slightly more at 2.92 million. Expenditures and legislative, uh, dealing with bylaws and resolutions and all the legislative stuff, uh, budgeting 131680 General administration, the CAO and the office staff budgeting 423000 Office expenses 119150 Legal at 27000 The audit uh, at 8000 for the audit. Uh, assessment, the assessment branch does the assessment for the properties in the town of Swan River. They charge us a fee of $57,190. Uh, taxation expense of $6,000. Election, this is election year. The other year showed a blank, so this year they're budgeting $66.50 for election. Membership and town van, that's for gas and so on for the town van, is $1,975. Damage claim and liability insurance, budgeting $15,000. General government sundry, 14,000. Past service payments, uh, that would be for people that would be retiring. Uh, on our allocated employee benefit, zero. So total, total of government services, last year 812,000 budgeted uh, as expenditure this year, slightly less. So a little bit of reduction uh, on that particular thing. Uh, recovery from the utility, last year budgeted 72,000, recovered 53, this year budgeting 57. Other recoveries last year budgeted 7,500 and received 77. This is a little bit lower to receive um, at uh, 4,550. Protective services expense, police uh, again uh, down a little bit, and what could happen? We could get uh, that retro pay charge to us. 
by law enforcement officer is uh, 22,750. Fire, 238,000 last year, 243 this year, a slight increase there. EMO, uh, 7,000 this year, eight budgeting 8,650. Flood control, uh, last year 16,000. We could probably take that 2,500 out of there. I don't think, I think the flood season is probably over. That's just my opinion. Uh, building inspection, cost of uh, 34,900 for the building inspector. Other safety inspections, what would that include, Chief Fedorchuk? Uh, is that uh, public buildings and Public stuff? buildings, requested inspections, that type of thing. Thank you. Animal and pest control, last year budget of 21,000, spent 26, this year spending 23,000. So total of protective services you have last year of uh, budgeted 1.48 uh, and spent 135 this year budgeting uh, slightly less than the previous year's budget. Transportation services, road transport, uh, administration and engineering budgeting 93,000 this year 139,000. We have some other projects on the books uh, for this year. Uh, roads and streets, wage and benefits. Last year, budget of 1.046 million. This year, down slightly at 1.033. Equipment expense, 267. This year, 261. Workshop and yard operations. Last year's expense, 87,000. This year, budget of 91. Labor recovery. Uh, last year, budget of 830. This year, budget of 837. Equipment recovery, uh, budgeting 185. This year, a little bit higher. Road maintenance, 94,000 this year. I spent 107 this year, budgeting 114. Road construction, 46,000 this year, or last year, 10,000 this year. So we're going to take. I think we should just make a note on road construction. If if you notice that it's uh, lower this year, it's because it's probably uh, we're doing more, more capital pro projects this year as far as road construction. So it doesn't mean we're actually building less less roads or, or rebuilding less roads. It just means that. If, you, if your capital costs are, are down one year, your, your operating costs are up. They, we have the employees, they get paid regardless whether they're working for capital costs or, or for, uh, for or the operating budget. So you'll see we have uh, quite a number of, of uh, road, road reconstruction projects in the capital budget when we get to that. Okay, continue on with expenses and transportation services. Sidewalks, uh, 10,800 boulevards, 7540 tree trimming. Uh, 13,000 this year, 12. Ditches and drainage, 12,000, 14,400 this year. Storm sewers, 20,000 last year, budgeting 24,000 this year. Street cleaning budget of 21,000, the same as last year. Snow and ice removal, budgeting 124,000. Uh, again, this is a hard to estimate, but try to do a five year average kind of thing. Uh, street lighting, 77,000 both years. Traffic services, 28,000 this year, 29,800. Other road transport, nothing there. Airport, 21,920. This year, 23,521. There's probably something in there to pay the share of the, uh, the uh, crack ceiling that has to be done at the airport. Environmental health, uh, garbage and waste. The garbage collection last year, uh, the expense was 33,000. This year, we're budgeting 341. The nuisance ground contract last year budgeted 453. This year budgeting 472. Uh, recycling with the Lions Club last year expensed. Uh, we budgeted to spend 229, spent 268. This year budgeting 239, 370. Public health uh, cemeteries. The cost of operating the Birthwood Cemetery last year budget or spent 73. This year budgeting 7160. Money transferred uh, to the perpetual care fund of $8,400. Doctor recruitment fund last year $62,082. This year $64,224. Social assistance that amount is standard. I don't remember what year it was that the province turned over social assistance or took it over completely, where the town used to like look after part of the social assistance and grants to nonprofit organizations a uh, budget of $2,000. Regional planning and development, planning and zoning, uh, $5,800. Beautification and land rehabilitation, last year budgeted 65, spent 43, this year budgeting 5250. Urban weed control, 16,000, uh, budgeted last year, spent 14,000, 
13,700. Maybe with the new marijuana laws, we might have to have more duties to the weed control office. Christmas lights and decorations, a budget of 7,500 this year, budgeting 92. Communities in bloom, 1,700 this year, 2,350. Going to page, can't see. Resource uh, Conservation Industrial Development. Uh, Veterans Services Board, uh, 5983. Water Resources, that's the uh, Conservation District. Last year, 13,017,680. Other Economic Development Settlement Services, uh, 7,200. Assistance for Housing and Commercial Development, 33,000, this year, 35. Uh, tourism, that would be things to people like the Valley and the Mountain Tourism, uh, part time tourism. Public receptions, 4,500 this year, 2,500. Town promotion, $2,500. Annexation agreement, uh, uh, this is the last year of the annexation of what was the Reach property. It's now the Shulman property. <coughs> Recreation and cultural services, uh, community centers and halls, the War Veterans Hall, last year 90,000, this year 94,660. Uh, swimming pools and beaches last year budgeting 817 spent 747 this year budgeting 783 so we're trying to reduce that nothing on the golf courses skating rinks and arena budgeted 47 spent 405 this year budgeting 420,000 parks and playgrounds budgeted 138 spent 116 this year budgeting 130 so down from last year's projected budget and grants of uh, four thousand dollars Museum, our annual grant to the museum of $4,000. Uh, library, last year uh, the library grant was $78,259. This year uh, they're looking for $79,825. Other cultural facilities, uh, $1,500. Canada Day celebration, $6,600. So a total under cultural and recreation services last year, we budgeted $1.564. Actually, budgeting less at 1.547. Fiscal services transfer to capital, uh, 62,955. Debenture debt charges on all our debentures, the town office, uh, the wellness center, and other debenture debt of 498,000. Uh, going to transfers to general reserves. The equipment replacement re general reserve are transferring $2,500 in there. Equipment reserve up from $140,000 to $150,000. Nothing in a fire truck reserve. Gas tax reserve, we put in the $211,000 that we received from the federal government. Employee benefits and landfill culture, nothing in the budget for this year. Yes, Councilor Gloria. Back on libraries, this number is not right. On the, on the on the budget we're going to be passing later on tonight, they're asking for eighty-five thousand two hundred. They're not asking for seventy-nine thousand eight hundred, unless I'm reading this wrong. Two thousand eighteen proposed eighty-five two seventeen twenty-two. What that came from council saying that they were only going to oh. pay a certain amount okay. on that budget. Oh, okay. okay. Good. Okay, I'm going to the utility. Um, Water consumption revenue budgeted last year 1.1 million. I uh, actually received uh, 1.27 because that was because of the increase in the water rates, and that was partly through the year. This year, we're budgeting to receive 1.38 million. Uh, discounts, refunds, and cancellations uh, negative value. Uh, revenue under penalties budgeting 1,500 dollars. Hydrant rentals as the fire department 14,170. Installation services revenue $1,500. Connection revenue budgeting $30,000. Lagoon dumping fees budgeting to receive $10,000. Provincial grant, uh, we received some last year. We have nothing in our budget for provincial grants for this year. Uh, other reserves uh, put in, uh, in $3,546. Transfer from accumulated surplus, uh, last year $198, this $312. Does this mainly go to the list stations, Derek? The transfers? Yeah. Uh, I believe so, yeah. I have, I have to be sure. Okay. I have to okay, that. again with the utility administration, uh, last year budgeted 74, 40, 400. 
Uh, this year our budget is 60,000, so it's down. Administration, 4,000. Memberships and conventions where our uh, staff are sent away on professional development. Yes. That 312 transfer, that covers our 2016 uh, deficit. deficit. Right. Yeah. Okay, the audit, uh, $4,000, memberships and conventions, that's where I was. Insurance, $7,500. Going to water supply, expenditure on administration, and uh, last year budget at 60, spent 55, so this year spent 55. Customer billing and collection, budget at 18, spent 13, this year budgeting at 11 as an expenditure. Purification and treatment, up a little bit at 135,000. Water purchases, nothing. Uh, service of supply, 13400 uh, budgeting that amount this year. Transmission and uh, distribution, expenditure budget of $115, uh, cost 104 this year budgeting 105 dollars Other water service of supply, uh, last year budgeted 18 budgeting a little more at 21900 Connections, uh, budgeted $117,000. Uh, the actual expenditure was 88 this year budgeting $114,750. Going to sewage collection and disposal. Administration budgeted 60 last year, doing 55 this year. Sewage collection system budgeted 45 last year, a little less at 40,000 this year. Uh, sewage lift station 83,000 this year, 63,000. Sewage treatment and disposal budgeted 125, spent only 89, budgeting 110 this year. Uh, connect total last year budgeted 314,000, spent 230 this year, budgeting 270. So budget amount down. Transferring to capital, 825000 Last year we have nothing in the transfer this year. Transfer of deficit recovery from page 9 of 198000 and this year is 312000 Transfer to utility reserve, putting in $498,030. Uh, that would eventually go for the fund to uh, do something with what we're doing. Total expenditure last year budgeted 2.28, uh, spent 2.146. This year budgeting expenditure less than 1.753. Okay, the next page on page eight, it shows on the left-hand column taxable properties uh, for the town and the school division and. Uh, if we go to the column in the middle, uh, it shows the mill rate uh, that has to be applied to raise that amount of money in those categories. Do we have a page with a total on, Julie? No, we don't. This one? With the total mill rate? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You can call me probably just now. Mm -hmm. You can copy of that. He has them all up at. Uh, I don't have 30, 32.7 with the, with the school levy, just the town levy is 19.01. Uh, okay, what could happen, like we said that the original expenditure was 1.5% increase, but what happened, we're in a reassessment year, so to say everybody's property would where the taxes would go up, but 1.5% is not really fair. It's going to depend on what happened with your assessment, the assessed value of your property. If we go to page 9, uh, but where it says part 1 grants in lieu of taxes, so uh, the school division and the different government departments, the amount of money that they give to the town in lieu of taxes. Uh, and the second column, part 2, is contingent grants and transfers. For Dutch Elm disease, green tea, and recreation equipment. Uh, transfers from uh, to recover previous year's deficit, we said that was 2015, and uh, we put 39,709. Is that paid off? No, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay. okay, the utility operating deficit, that's where that 312,000 was coming that we mentioned before, Jason, uh, to pay off that deficit amount in the utility. Okay, the outstanding uh, debenture charges that we have, we have a new simple office and it shows the amount paid on the principal, uh, the interest paid and the closing balance. Uh, same for the wellness centers, uh, the payment and the amount. 
and the firefighting equipment, the breathing apparatus that was purchased for the fire department. Okay, we're going to page number 12 for the bench of debt charges. This is for the first the Ross Street lift station and uh, the maturity year, it was uh, by law passed in 2014 and uh, the principal and interest and the total payment and the year that it would be paid off. Uh, the Hayes uh, Street lift station, the same the cost of it and the borrowing and the payments and the 6th Avenue lift upgrade are all listed. Okay, five-year capital uh, expenditure program. This is just the plan, and for the most part, get in this one. Yeah, you missed uh, the current year capital. Okay. Okay, page 13, the capital budget. Uh, we know that the uh, cost for firefighting equipment is 13,000 borne by reserves. Sidewalks, uh, 40,000 would be reserves. Uh, asphalt basin and gutter uh, would be 30, 341,000 would come from uh, reserves, 124,000 would come from borrowing. Culvert replacements, uh, 30,000 from reserves. Half ton truck, uh, 22,000 from reserve. Era arena investigation, $10,000, 100 borne by the 10,000 by the general fund. Tractor and more blade, 32,000 come back from reserves. Uh, pool and hot tub repair, 32000 from uh, the general fund and 28000 from reserves. Hall upgrade to the bathroom, 16000 coming from the general fund. Hall food labeler, 4288 from the uh, general fund and there was a payback program on that. Water plant distribution pump, $352,000 borne by reserves. Well, project phase one and two, 500,000, that's coming from borrowing. Uh, water supply emergency, 150,000, borne by reserves. And Lagoon environmental assessment, 60,000, uh, borne by uh, the reserves. General and special reserve fund withdrawals, the machine replacement reserve, uh, 54,000 to capital. The opening balance is 281,772. Fire truck replacement. Capital 13,000. Recreation facilities 28,000. Federal gas tax 276,000. Water and sewer transferring 697 to capital. The last line is the total amount in those reserve funds. Borrowing, uh, well project adventure, amount 500,000 in 20 years. <coughs> Curb and gutter replacement, 124,000 over 15 years. Those are subject to municipal board approval. And the last uh, page is the five-year capital plan. Uh, remember that this is just a plan and this is a, it's not cast in stone by any sense of the need. And I, uh, council can adapt to situations uh, throughout the year to change this capital plan, but it does give us a plan as we move forward in the next five years. So we'll be looking at possibly in 2019 a replacement of the van. Uh, 2000 SW development landscaping, 35,000 firefighting equipment, looking for money in 2019-20 and right through. Firefighting vehicle, a big one there would be in 2022. Um, Money for replacement of a fire truck. Engineering and survey equipment, they're looking for some specialized equipment. Storm sewer and culverts, 2019-2020 uh, projected. Garbage and recycling equipment, that would be a garbage truck. Uh, cemetery footing and survey call bearing. The problem in the cemetery is the shifting of the headstones. That the new plan might be to put uh, them on a Long base or to put money in more than the, into another column bearing. Arena repairs, that's going to be the big issue. There's a real problem with the arena that the brine is leaking in a number of places and also there's some heating in the southwest corner estimated to cost a million dollars to repair that. 
their arena equipment replacement in 2019, 2020. Playground equipment upgrade, $10,000. Pool equipment, uh, $30,000. Water and sewer renewal, $985. Uh, that would be, depending on funding probably from the federal government, that would be redoing uh, Main Street from the railroad tracks here west to the intersection with Highway 83 coming from the south. If highways is going to redo the asphalt, it would be prudent for us to redo the sewer and water on that street, you not know, have to dig up the new uh, pavement. Distribution and line swabbing, looking at 45,000 in uh, 2020. Lift station pump replacement, lagoon construction. That's the one that is going to be a major, major hit in 2020 uh, to to uh, redo the lagoon for 6.5 million. So that is really the end of what we have. If anybody has any questions, I'll leave you with any questions. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear it. 1360. General Government and Sunday, that's the one I asked about today. What is included in that? Website. I'm sorry, I can't website. 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 Sorry. The town website. Town website. Town website. That's, that's our subscription to all net, like we put a town website and our, for our meeting uh, agendas and all that stuff. To do so it's not just the website, it's oh. also the, oh. the, uh, okay, the information that you guys receive. Yeah. The network we use. Okay, we have a paperless meeting system, okay. a service tracker system, and we have the apps as well for the website. Oh, okay. okay. And I know you said something about the police, it's 2100, 2100. Mm -hmm. What has happened is the police, uh, they had a, a retroactive pay increase and we deal with D Division and their financial department, they keep saying that this, or this, this amount's good, they, they just bill us for it. We really have no say in it for seven officers, but that hasn't come through yet. They talk about it at the meeting, we were at Dauphin in a meeting probably four months ago that they talked about it and we still haven't received it. So they bill you for these officers' wages? Yeah. yeah. And then so if they get a retroactive pay increase yeah. through their union, right. then that'll come back at a later date. That's what we're waiting. So the town will get a back, yeah. what you're saying. Okay. No, we'll pay more. We'll pay, we'll pay more. more. We'll pay more. Yeah. Oh, you're paying so more. So if they're, if they're hourly yeah. wages, so I'll just pick a number. went from $25 an hour to $30. Um, we would get a, yeah. a notice. Retro, so, so the town pays the police yes. Yes. department here? Yeah. Yes. We pay for seven officers here, plus two secretaries in the RCMP, and we pay a rate so much per square foot that we they estimate we use in the uh, uh, the building that they have. Gotcha. Yeah, it's one of my biggest pet peeves because if you drive a mile outside of the, out of the town, you don't have to pay that. It, it makes up twenty five percent. We could lower taxes twenty five percent in town tomorrow if we got treated the same way as our neighbors in Swan Valley West and Manitoba Bozeman do. So why is it not the same? Well, let's talk to our good friend, uh, Mr. Wojciech. Um it's, it's provincial, because in Saskatchewan, they build their policing different. We've taken it to the AMM, the Association of Manitoba Municipalities, as a resolution, but in Manitoba, the urban municipalities are far outnumbered by the rural municipalities, so we've got three times as rural, many rural municipalities who don't want to pay, and we're asking, okay, you're going to pay more for it. It's never, the resolution will never pass, even if it's a matter of fairness. How many Swan Rivers brought resolutions for before and we get defeated every time? So like every town is like this? Right, right? across the top. Any, over any, any town special. over uh, 800 people, I think you have to pay for 1,200 people. You have to pay for policing, yes. Even when they amalgamated and they added, they added some small urban municipalities, 
uh, to a, a thing and their population was higher than 800, they still don't have to pay the extra police. Thing. So well, it's, it's my not. Question then is, given that the cost of the RCMP, would it be feasible for the town of Swan River to start their own police force? We've talked about that. I, I, it's something we've talked about. I mean, there are. There are benefits to having the RCP when a major crime does happen oh, yeah, in town. Yeah. We get we get the resources that we wouldn't necessarily get. We have talked to other municipalities like Altona and and uh, who do have their own police force. Rivers, Manitoba has their own police force, and it's something we're always looking at. But it's it would be a we'd have to do do some definite community consultations, I would think, before we would and have have, have a serious study done before. Uh, well, I'm just saying in the long term, would it pay, pay for the town to do that instead of paying two or seven members now to the RCMP? So, but just a question. And on the budget line there, it shows it's lower budgeted this year. That's because uh, last year, like, we was a full membership, and like now there's vacancies. So, when we're part way into the year, so those vacancies are protracted in the budget. That's why you would see a lower number, which would probably be. When we're talking about retro wide point, usually the number goes the other way. Mm -hmm. This way, we're, we're factoring in vacancies like the staff sergeant, all that being the way. So that's why the number looks backwards compared right. to what we were saying. Right. Um, and I know there's always so many people needed for. Yeah, the, the police and the population or whatever, right? I mean, are we, are we capped at. I know there's some vacancies, but are we capped at. <coughs> top amount or are we kind of in the middle of the number of policing? We're probably uh, we're probably under one. I think the recommendation for here is eight and we have seven. That's really a municipal decision. We could pay for more, but it that's a bit of a we have a say in this, what you're saying. We if we wanted yeah, more we, want we could more. have more. We'll call, but, I mean, like, more. Like, but they say you have to have so many though. Yeah. Kind of thing. I think I mean for the formula. Carpool for or something that's called. I can't remember exactly. What like the recommendation. Determine the optimum, optimum number of members for a municipal. Sorry, I think you're They had a formula. I forget the, the okay. name of it, but they would use this formula and plug in the number of population and the crime statistics and things in case. Okay, uh, the, the optimum number of officers you should have is seven. Okay. <coughs> so, like, I mean, because it's not just one river this usually that it's using this, but we're getting dinged for it again. Right, like that's what we say the United so, States is like the optimum number is seven for the town of Swan River. Right. There's like, I don't know, like the number 20 members in there, but they're, covering, but they're covering the whole district, so they move where they're needed. So, okay, so those ones the town doesn't pay for. No, no, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but in some ways, it can be an advantage with having them here because if there's something happening here, they can quickly withdraw or withdraw another officers. If they, if there was only seven and yeah. there's something major happening, then they'd have to draw them from Winnipeg Osses or Rodland or someplace like that. Okay, so under um, Article 3, Section 2626, other safety inspections, was that? I know somebody said something is that about building. There, there's some requested fire inspections in there. Um, some commercial stuff. Okay. So like where does the revenue for that come from? Uh, well, for example, if you had a, a business and you wanted to accept it, it was on our mandatory list, uh, we charge them hundred fifty dollars for that inspection. Oh, so that so would be worth it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so the business is paid for it, then the corresponding revenue, if you turn back to page two, under uh, line uh, uh, 0841, this would be the revenue that those departments would make. So protective services makes a revenue of uh, 80,000. So the, the business, when they pay their $150, it's in that 80,000. So the recovery is basically an allocated cost that we charge, we charge out to our account, out to our accounts, and so that is basically the number that we charge ourselves to use our equipment. 
So it, we have a lot more work being done uh, this year, and after all the estimates are piled up in all the accounts, that is the number that's compiled out of all of our allocated accounts in the transportation budget for the town equipment. So basically just to add to what they're saying, when the, all the uh, public works equipment, say public works goes and clears uh, snow at the arena, well it charges the rec department for that, so this is the income from the rec department showing in the, in the public works side of the budget. Road maintenance there. Right, so we have uh, like that covers everything from liquid dust control to pothole patching, cold mix, crack seal. This year we purchased our own cold mix. Like if you notice in the past, Main Street or First Street North, we, we would fix a manhole or have an excavation. We would always have gravel. And it's, always, it's always such a pain when it's a, a washboard. So we we usually get our, our cold mix from highways, but they really limit us to how much we can take. So this year we, we have our own pile for those main streets and it costs around $10,000 uh, to have our own pile. but. Whenever we have an excavation on Main Street or Busy Street, it will be put in with cold mix, and so at a later date, we'll excavate it and put in hot mix. So where the would the emulsion or the oil come from for that? What? It comes from Winnipeg. Maple Leaf got the tender. Oh. Okay. York and does the same sort of thing. I just wonder if it would be cheaper. Uh, yeah, Pounders? Yep. Yeah. Now Maple Leaf got a good oh. price. So maybe like cheaper, is that what you're yeah. saying? Uh, on our quotes, yes. On our quote price. Okay, so that's the quote includes um, it's, a, it's, it's separate from the asphalt. It was just it was just quoted prices per yard. Sorry, it's per ton. So that includes them bringing it here. Yeah. We don't have to be on top of that. It was it was to our yard, FOB. <clears throat> um, sorry, I'm just going to go up a little bit on that point she had. Dirty one, uh, looks like two question marks beside it. Administration and engineering? Yeah. Is that by 42,000? So, over the last few years, we've We've changed our, our accounts, and what used to be included was the, the superintendent's payroll tax, workers' compensation, all of that uh, meal deals. And uh, what we've added to this one account is our town town foreman's wage, 87, well, town foreman's wage, and the his payroll tax, workers' comp, and as well engineering costs, including mileage, advertising, memberships, registrations, uh, equipment repairs, telephone, office supplies. So that is the increase. So that. basically the wage is what brought it up. Wages and uh, engineering costs. Yeah. Okay. Um, the snow and ice will be dropped. Thirty-two, thirty-four. Yeah. Up to one hundred and twenty-four thousand. Yes. So we've had, on average, our average ten-year cost is one hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So we've spent at our highest in the last 10 years $183,000 in one year in snow removal. At our lowest, 88,000. So it's it really is a it's a roll of the dice. We we kind of try we kind kind of try and take a three-year average, but uh, it really depends on the weather. And when we're getting a lot of snowfalls, you know we can say well we're. We're out of the budget, so we're going to stop, but that doesn't go over very well. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, 4330 nuisance ground. Okay, that's the contract yes. for the operation of the nuisance ground. And what else is included? I will let you know here. 4330 nuisance ground. So yeah, that's the. There's an increase in the the contract for the the contractor out there, as well. We did increase our our labor 
like that, that we're allocating ourselves to work out. Like we have, a, sorry, we have a, a project, a town project in operating where we're going to be covering our berms this year. So we've increased uh, uh, our labor allocation by ten thousand uh, dollars. Included in that is fifteen thousand dollars for equipment, rat control, uh, telephone, hydro. Material three thousand dollars for the site. Like any electrical problems happen, for example, uh, water and septic. Did we need to provide that out there for the workers? Uh, building repairs, stuff like that. But the main increase on that is the contract increase. Okay. Um, the cemeteries. Um, it's up by going to seven hundred dollars, but I mean, this is something I think I brought up in another council meeting. Is there? Like I said, I know we're not a small, some small towns, but there, is there a way of getting, I don't know, committee, a group, or whatever, to take over some of that, to bring down the cost of that? Because, like I said, everybody. Or, Councilor Friesen has tried and has a group. What's that? Councilor Friesen, Friesen has tried and talked to a number of organizations and people to like the volunteer group that you're going through that and I don't think she's having much success in that um, okay. venture to have people you take over. You probably seem to want to volunteer and do and, and just kind of, you know, they have loved ones out there. And yeah, it, it's good in both, like when you go do the, the minor stuff and stuff, but when it gets down to the the bulwark of leveling headstones. Well, leveling headstones is another thing. Yeah. I mean, you need to know mm -hmm. what you're doing, kind of right. thing, right? So, so um, anyhow, um, okay, in communities of view, I know it's only up 1877, but I mean, every little bit counts. So, why do you increase? Uh, that's, that's basically, like, we tried to cut that one pretty hard last year. Cut the budget pretty hard last year, but uh, when the Main Street flowers come up and and the, the Canada 150 days came up and there's flowers out at, over here and there's signs over here and there's flags that we purchased for Canada 150. That's the reason for the overage last year, but uh, there's always, I guess we're budgeting responsibly on, on this one because I, I can take it down. But I know we're going to go over because there's always those requests for flowers, and it's it is very hard to say no when someone wants to plant flowers on a Canadian flag in the entrance of town, and it does look nice. And we, you know, a lot of people's opinions, we should have those things, and others we don't, and we're budgeting for that. It's right, and you know, I I don't dispute it looks things look nice and that, but I also think it looks even nicer when I'm sorry, but town lots are maintained by simple cutting them on a regular basis, and not just cutting the middle of them, but trimming around the poles, trimming around the boxes, all that sort of stuff. You know, be town beautification isn't down Main Street only, or it, as you come in, it's all through town. And I think the town really needs to take, you know, of those empty lots that, that they own because they're a real eyesore. And, you know, I know in our area, I mean, thank God there's more houses in there now. And those lots, we've been up and out for about 22 years. They've been a nice circle day one. And it'd be really nice if there was some, some way to manicure them. Yeah, no, I agree. Like we could make a an every buy like a bi-weekly every ten days, no matter what, they're out there cutting it. It's just that sounds really good, but I it is just so hard to do with the with the services that we provide and the and the limited amount of hands we have with what we're expected to do with the in the rest of transportation and the utility, at least on the public works side I gotta say. Uh, it is that hard to do with you know, we've got three water breaks right now to say to somebody, you're going to have to wait for your water service because we got to go cut an empty lot. Well, I mean, it's, it's like it, that's an extreme example. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of common sense. Yeah. Stuff, but, um, you know, like, I mean, if every minute of every day 
Life's Coffee Breaks and Lunch Hours is work, oh, yeah. is work related, then that's fine. But when it's not, and I've heard lots of stories that it's not, that's when it starts to tip the taxpayers to pocket money. I hear you. So, I mean, I think some of that needs to be looked at too. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so on to the next thing. Um, They have a formula that they charge the fee to based part partially on assessment and partially on the population. So uh, if the assessment goes up and the population goes up, then your your fees to the conservation district go up. What the rural municipalities are having trouble with, the farmland has gone up, uh, the assessed value of farmland has gone up, and they're finding they're having to put more into the conservation too. So they're looking at adjusting the formula, but that hasn't happened yet. Well, now they're, they're thinking because of the increase in the price of farmland, their assessments that they're required to pay is going up. So they're looking for a way to maybe adjust that. So we'll see what happens here in the future. Okay. Um, Assistance for housing and commercial um, estate, 7200 to, is that 5261? That is our, when we, if someone builds, builds a new home and you get uh, rebated back a portion of the first and possibly second year's taxes, right. that's that money right there. That's always been there. I'm not, I'm not sure why. Probably. I guess backstory on this form that we're all looking at. This came, came from a, a government template on how municipalities okay. would budget. So municipalities that might have a beach would put it under there. So. Okay. Okay. So that doesn't. The beaches don't pertain to us. No. Um, okay. So in there, it's an increase of thirty-four thousand. In which, which one I call you? Under swimming pools? Swimming pools, I think. Compared to the actual, you mean? What's that? Compared to the actual from last year? Uh, yeah. yeah, from the actual to this year's budgeted. That's, that's at the Wrecking Wellness Center's avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was some projects budgeted and we knew that our revenue was down, so we were trying really hard to Down about eleven thousand dollars. Budgeted one sixty six down to one fifty five. Sir, I never heard. Zero three two zero discount yeah. refunds cancellations. It's a minus thirty four thousand five twenty three. What is that? What is that? 
Terry, am I wrong? But is that our is that our changes where I where I, no, that would be. I think that uh, this has something to do with uh, something that happened at the arena. I think so. Uh, no, this is the utility. Yeah, I know, but the utility. Oh, with the right. arena. Sorry, yeah. you know, with the uh, a leak in the brine or something. Right, that was a. Uh, I guess uh, it was a relief given to a, a water bill at the arena. Basically, what that ended up being. I don't know if that's the whole thirty thousand though. I think it was. Was it the whole thirty thousand? Most of it, yeah. So this was a water bill at the arena. Yes. That the taxpayers are paying for. Uh, if we if we didn't credit it, you'd be paying for it because we'd have to be paying for it through the arena. But what about, I don't know, I don't know how this works, with different events that happen here. Can some of that be? And it is, that's the $160,000 of revenue that the park, Parks and Recreation brings in. Events that happen there are included in that. Okay. Ultimately, the utility paid for that instead of the Recreation Department. Okay, um, G0430 transfer capital. Um, where, where does that come from, that transfer capital? Where, where does it originate? If, if you go to uh, page 13, you'll see, you'll see uh, everything that's born by by reserves, any of the water-related things, that's the that's where that money comes from. And we've we've got like uh, the uh, distribution plant uh, pump, the uh, emer water emergency for 150, distribution for 352, uh, lagoon assessment for 60,000. So that's when we transfer it out of the operating and into the capital side of the budget. This is where it comes to. Okay, so it's like a re what's a reserve? So, so is there anything still left in our reserve then? Uh, yeah. At the start of the year, there was one point, uh, just over a million dollars, and we're transferring out uh, seven hundred thousand. So it'll be three hundred thousand left in the reserve, but we're putting in uh, roughly five hundred thousand a year. No, through uh, water utilities, water rates. typical loan as you get further along into the loan more money goes to cover off the capital and less goes to cover off the interest so well, yeah, the first part of the loan is going to show a lot of it going to pay interest and later on it will gradually go down and a lot well, all three of these were only in their our first or second or third year of paying them down they're all these are all three lift station projects that have been done in the last three years okay. I don't know I mean we've had most we've never had the interest more the principal being paid. You know what I mean? I just I have a hard time figuring that. But if it's only I shouldn't say only four percent, but only four percent isn't a lot. I just well, when you we're, we're sure. you figure you borrow a hundred thousand dollar house at four percent, you're going to pay close to two hundred thousand dollars for that once by the time it's done. Yeah. And typically, at the very beginning of when you're paying back a loan, the beginning of that process or that time, you're paying more. Towards the interest than, than anything, like usually, very close. Yeah. 
because, it, because uh, yeah. the, the world amount is more, right? Like, yeah. Each year it reduces, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's why you're paying too much interest. Very right. often that. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody likes to pay interest. No. Okay, on page 13. Are you asked about the state state credit? I don't care what it's for. I really need to warn about the money. So, like, there's some being transferred from the reserve for that, right? Colleen, can you repeat that? We just didn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, under asphalt based curb and gutter, there is uh, born by borrowing 124000 So some is, the, the 341000 is coming from the reserve. So the balance is 124000 right? But when there's curb and gutter, and, or I should say curb and gutter, like asphalt put that, like people pay a portion of that, right? So I guess I'm not getting why we have to still borrow 124000 if the people are Pain. That that's the exact amount that we'll be getting from the people. So that's oh, how the local so improvement works. Okay. Is, uh, so is you borrow it, you pay it, the people pay, and then you pay that off automatically, right. or is it going on for a loan for ten years? That's a good question. I know that that's the amount that the that the the, the benefiting properties are given towards that project. That's the borrowing bylaw we have to pass in order to move through the local improvement project. So what the question is, what, like it's one thing to borrow it and then pay back and get that money in, but is the money coming in going to be something else? Or is it going to be going to be maybe, maybe. It'll be going to the next I, don't, I couldn't say if we pay that right off and then and then we just collect from the ratepayers, or if the ratepayers are, I don't know, Terry, would you be able to answer that? I couldn't. Well, I've seen projects in the past where how much the ratepayers paid up front reduced how much the town had to borrow from the bank. But so if, if the ratepayers paid half of that 124, then presumably the town would only have to borrow half of that up if they paid up front. Right, the ones that don't pay the town covered for carries that. Mm -hmm. well project for five hundred thousand. It's another borrowing there. So what I guess what is that involving for that well project? That includes the uh, development of well number four, the new well that is about to be drilled uh, to replace uh, well two and as well a phase two which is upgrading uh, the electrical components, monitoring components, everything that we we should have out there in order to to find out a problem like we did have a lot sooner than uh, two full days. Okay, so I see some of this, and I'm not sure if I'm um, right with this or not, but. With regard to this winter's water crisis, um, I guess where is it showing it on here? Is, the, is one of it like the water plant distribution count? Is that 252? Is that part of that? No, that no. is its own project. We did have a pump fail around New Year's. Uh, we currently are running on two of three pumps at our water plant, but uh, they have run their course, and that is the project to replace all three pumps uh, in our water treatment plant. Is 352? 352. Yeah. The water supply emergency is second last line from the bottom. That's the, for 150. That's the uh, the event from the beginning of February. Uh, second last one from the bottom where it says water supply emergency, 150 on page 13. Uh, it's if you see the distribution project 352, it's two lines below that. Right where you were looking at plant water distribution, okay. look two lines below it. Oh, water supply emergency. Yeah. yeah. So this, so this is the, the that's the amount for 
past two years. Yes. Okay. So that's the entire cost that it cost us. Like to bring in equipment and whatever else. We still, as as early as last or as late as last week, have charged uh, numbers. I don't have a total tally with me right now, but I can get that for you when what the total is. But it'll be less than this amount, correct? Yeah. And you know, maybe this is something to ask now. So, are those pumps now? Are they going to be like on a schedule to service these pumps? I don't know if it'd be yeah, once every a year or once a year or what. But it's kind of like if you have a car, you <coughs> you want to change regularly because once a motor goes, it doesn't make sense. You want to change rates, so yeah, we there will be a, a full procedure and a full lifetime maintenance plan for those pumps. They'll be pulled every. Probably it'll be seven years, but that's what we're looking at. Okay. So that's the requirement like every seven years. Okay. We've heard everything from five to fifteen, but we'll likely do seven. Okay. Um, and are there any grants for paving? For paving? Uh we're hoping the municipal road improvement program comes out for a hundred thousand uh, dollars. That's the one that we that we sure hope comes out, and if there's any other ones that come up, we'll definitely be applying for them. Okay, and that would benefit what the town needs to pay, or is that going to benefit any those of us that are having to pay? Uh, because of the bylaw that state the local improvement states uh, that there's now a, a fee. What with what the letter that you guys got is the amount that you'll pay. There's, so there's no more estimating or up up and down. The letter that you got and the number that you got is is the number that you'll pay. Okay. So, but I thought when we were at that last meeting, they could say, maybe I misunderstood. If something changes, like we would actually get a bill once it's done, right? Yeah. That would be the most we pay, right? Be the interest, like the interest rate, would be the only thing that would change. Okay. If you were not willing, like if you didn't pay it off, yeah, in what, that that's the only variable. If there was the hundred thousand dollar grant that came, that according to the bylaw that gets applied to the town's portion first. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Colin. Good questions. So before we wrap it up here, I'd like to thank Julie and Terry and Patty and Darren. And Derek and all the new people and everybody involved. It's been a long process. We've been working on this since December. So uh, thank you for all the work you've put into the budget this year. Council Board. Um, just uh, looks like we've got some good news coming up tonight as far as later on in the meeting as far as asphalt prices. Will the, that be reflected when we do second and third reading of this? Like, I guess will, you, will that change your numbers where we can where we'll change this? Uh, there will be an opportunity to amend this with the with the acceptance of the asphalt tenders. Yeah. Okay. Me and Terry have discussed that already. Today. Boy, it'd be real nice if you could make this reflect the the reality of the situation. That would be very good. Well, a lot of it comes out of reserves, though. Like what we, yeah, can, what we can do is the uh, we have a plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I guess I just want to echo uh, uh, his worship's comments. We'll thank the department heads. I know I can be kind of onerous during budget time, and I'm probably not your guys' most favorite person during that time, or maybe the entire time of the year. I don't know. But I want to thank you guys for all the hard work you did and uh, bringing this budget in uh, where it's going to be something palatable. Also, thank you, Councillor. I think to you guys put a lot of time in on meetings, and uh, like I said, since December we've been working on it. So, thank you for the work you've done. Upon hearing all persons present, I adjourn the hearing. We have a motion moved by Councillor DeLaurier, second by Councillor Moore, whereas Section 162.1 of the Municipal Act requires that every council must adopt a financial plan for each fiscal year in the form approved by the Minister consisting of A, an operating budget, B, a capital budget, C, an estimated operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and D, a five-year capital expenditure program, whereas Section 
to two of the municipal act requires that before adopting the financial plan, council must give public notice and hold a hearing in respect to the plan. And whereas the public hearing has been held, therefore be it resolved that the financial plan for the 2018 fiscal year consisting of A, an operating budget, B, a capital budget, C, an estimate of operating revenue and expenditures for the following fiscal year, and B, a five-year capital program be hereby approved. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We have a motion moved by Councillor Jacobson, second by Councillor Delorier, resolved at bylaw 5, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, set rates for taxation for 2018. <coughs> we read a first time. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Delorier, resolved a special meeting council now adjourned. All in favor? Carried.